Hello, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful Friday. It is my favorite damn day of the week. I don't know about you guys. I'm off weekends. Let's get right into this review. We have Emily and Brennan. They're making some kind of pineapple homemade pizza or whatever. This happens to be the 24th day of marriage for everybody. Emily's like, you know, I, I did this so that we can basically try to build a bridge to the last episode when they had that little weird situation with Brennan and he was just defiant and didn't want to go to counseling okay so Brennan then expresses discomfort with a therapy exercise a sensual a touching with no clothes on him he wants to change that to focusing on hugs and it didn't look like a romantic hug and did you even want to touch her because you don't seem like you even want to touch her the experts decide after I don't know how the hell long this was I don't know who the hell you guys think y'all are fooling because you're not fooling me after all that time, Michael feeling distraught, upset that he got jilted at the altar. Now, on episode number 11, is when the experts decide they now want to come and give Michael the praises what I do when I want to be close to you. I live my hands in praise <laughs> y'all know i don't sing like that but yeah i had to I had to do it i'm sorry guys i had to do it but anyway my favorite topics are going to be talked about today religion but we'll get to that later okay the experts gather here with michael and they're having a little meeting okay and saying how amazing he is and praising him and um there's like you know what by the way you know we embarrassed you enough uh in the beginning of the season in fact you were the very first wedding they didn't say that i did all right. But um, how about we embarrass you again? I mean, or how about you take a chance being embarrassed again? And they offer him or Dr. Pepper offers him a chance to be matched up again. It seemed like without hesitation, even though Michael, Michael, I love you. I really do. But you talk a lot and you talk around in circles. Gonna go around in circles. But you know, I'm not, I'm not, I promise I won't sing anymore in this uh, review. And you're welcome. But um, yeah, Michael talks a lot in circles. And as much as I love him and all, and I do love him, bro, you doing too much talking. And I got a lot of nerve. Michael agrees to be hooked up again in this marriage thing. Claire and Cameron did the skiing thing inside of the skiing place. And even then, Cameron was being freaking condescending. Does he see that he's condescending? I mean, for those of you who are Cameron fans, can you please, in the comment section, can you tell me why the hell you like him? Because I don't like that fool. There are people that actually go really hard for Cameron, and I just don't understand it. So put it in the comment section why you like Cameron. Okay, thanks. So Cameron says he's still trying to figure out Claire. She says one thing one day and another thing the next. They've had problems meeting in the same place. And if I hear on the same page one more time too. That's another phrase they used a lot in this episode. Claire is willing to continue to try. She thinks it's hard because Cameron has given a lot of his energy to make the relationship work, but she's aware that he has checked out. They're here in this awkward scene because every time I see them in a scene, they're so freaking awkward to me. Claire says, it's weird, all right? And she says that they didn't sign up to be in a platonic marriage and Cameron agrees. Claire says that she's not a quitter, it's important that they try everything to make it work. Becca and Austin are no longer on their candy cane cloud floating in the sky. They are facing challenges. Becca is crying like somebody stole her kids, her man, and her life insurance. I don't know what to do. It's really like going crazy over here. Y'all really got Pastor Cal out the bed to talk about heaven and hell? This couldn't wait till the morning? He looked like y'all woke him up. Pastor Cal was just you know trying to open austin's mind as a cow basically says that you know there are people in afghanistan all over the world who have not heard of jesus are you trying to tell me that they're going to go to hell becca was crying because austin was like you know <laughs> i'm sorry but i'm about to put a voice on i'm really sorry but austin was like i will love you i will love you anyway even if you go to hell <laughs> wait a minute wait 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 a minute wait a minute austin did you say to becca that even if you die, I can still love you if you go to hell? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, hate to be laughing in y'all ears, but that is crazy talk. I mean, maybe the reason why y'all not having sex is because y'all talking about hell, because hell's not very sexy. Pastor Cal basically has Austin open his mind. I'm not going to sing anymore. I promised and I am not. He admonishes Austin to open his mind and challenge himself to 
try to be more broad with his thinking and you know be more open so now we're at the 29th day of marriage claire is meeting here with lauren lauren can you just stop coming on married at first sight and have a youtube channel about natural hair i would appreciate it thank you very much all right your hair is beautiful absolutely freaking beautiful okay 10 10 10 across the board now claire you just had to throw that little smidgen in okay about how's onion rings nobody cares about onion rings okay he's just who cares no one cares i don't care do y'all care about orion okay then i'm sick and tired of seeing him i am not tired of lauren lauren you're excluded from that but i am tired of orion so claire is expressing her concerns about cameron's commitment saying basically that he checked out okay cameron on the other end is over here talking with orion revealing he feels checked out of the marriage orion you made this big ado i don't know if i'm using the right word forgive me if i'm not you made this big ado with lauren about disrespecting your culture and you're sitting here with a white man that joked about a reservation seems like hypocrisy interesting so lauren advises claire to hold on not to quit too soon she doesn't want to have any regrets thinking about the what ifs orion says to cameron i wish i advocated for myself a bit more Orion, if you don't, your name rhymes with lion for a reason. You're a freaking liar. We cannot get enough of you running your mother freaking lips. You're constantly talking about yourself, about your needs, about what you need, about what you want, about what you don't have, about what you have, about what you want for the future. All you did was advocate for yourself. Why are you freaking lying? I didn't advocate for myself. I wish you'd advocate yourself off the show, okay? I'm tired of seeing you. Orion encourages Cameron. Just, you know, you know, you got to make yourself happy. You got to advocate for yourself. Claire and Cameron have decided not to celebrate their anniversary. She says that the word anniversary, she feels, has put a lot of pressure on Cameron. She says that there's confusion and mixed emotion, and she just can't take that weight off. And Claire says she's trying to get familiar with these feelings and emotions, but they're not making sense to her. She says she feels bad when Cameron asks her how she feels and she doesn't know. The couples receive their wedding videos because this is their one month anniversary or whatever. And Becca and Austin are gushing and they're smiling and they're laughing again. And now they're in love again. They're in love again. That religion thing was nothing. It was just a blip on the radar. It was really nothing. It was really freaking nothing. It's like it never happened. That's how they were acting. Cameron was supposed to do this. Uh, I don't know. I guess he was supposed to do some clip with Claire going somewhere. But he decided that he's gonna call his friend Atilio up that he hasn't seen in a million years. And they're gonna go, I don't know, hiking or whatever the hell he said he was doing for hours. You decided to call your friend to take up the spot for Claire. All righty then. And Cameron was, he was proud as a peacock that he wasn't with Claire. He said he got to clear his head and he was just happy as ever. And that's how I knew it was the beginning of the end, y'all. Cameron informs Claire that he will not be coming home. Big surprise, okay? Because they both have hit a wall, they know it, and they're at the point now where they, they're like, you know what, I, I mean, I'm just, one of us gotta make a move. Emily and Brennan embark on a horseback riding adventure where Brennan falls in love with a horse named Gucci, gives this horse all of his love and affection, and Emily's like, you really have more affection for that horse than you do me. And you know what, Emily? Sorry, but it's true. And Austin and Becca go have their fun ice skating next. So now Emily and Brennan are here having a little fancy dinner and Brennan couldn't be bothered to put on more than a little freaking shirt that he would put to go move automotive parts. I don't know what the hell. Emily says she feels like today was a good stepping stone. But you literally guys, y'all haven't talked about anything, so I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You need to stop letting him get away with murder, Emily, basically. But Emily says that she feels with all the changes moving in and all that, that her and Brennan have gotten into a rhythm. They're having a little pleasant conversation, and all of a sudden, Brennan says that he doesn't want to sugarcoat it. It's been very tough for him. And Brennan says in the past, he would have just ran from a red flag. And Emily says, am I a red flag? And Brennan says, yes. Brennan, you are the biggest red flag of them all. Okay, I'm surprised you even have legs and arms. I have no idea what the hell you have the nerve to say to Emily. And the messed up thing about shows like this is that we don't always get to see the back parts. That's why I said I was going to start just looking over the after party episodes in case there's some additional info that we miss on here. Originally, I just wouldn't want to be bothered. 
but I do realize there's some information in there sometimes that is pertinent to our recaps. And so if I feel that I have to do that, I will. And, you know, I'll bring up, I'll bring it up in the recaps. But anyway, he's basing it on the fact that there's no attraction. And in the past, he says that he would have just left. Look at Emily's face. She wants to punch him in the freaking face. Austin has a video chat with Becca's friend, Lindsay, about religion, about what she believes, how she doesn't believe such a person full of life, such as Becca, will be going to hell, you know, and, it, and, and is trying to help Austin understand her belief system as she's Catholic. Michael's here with his friends, letting them know he's going to try again with his Married at First Sight. His friend right here on the left, I believe her name's Evram, but she says, you know, if they're going to match you up again, they're going to have to change the way they go about things because that first one was a failure, okay? All of a sudden, Dr. Pepper shows up, lets him know, yes, we definitely found you a person. You'll be getting married in two weeks, yada, 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 and let's move on. Everybody gets together at this dinner, and Brandon, you look like you about to go do some laundry. What? Why are you dressed like that? You gave your outfit the effort that you're giving this marriage. You really look like you're about to like go work on some cars or something. What the hell? Austin, you looked good. Karen, you looked all right. Everybody else looked beautiful. Um, Claire, Claire, you took out that freakum dress, didn't you? I'm not gonna do it. And you know I love Beyonce, but I ain't gonna do it. But Claire snatched out her freakum dress out the closet. They're talking and asking all these questions and Brennan is really diverting the questions to everybody else except his own damn lips. Brennan was just so emotionally distant, it was ridiculous. So at the dinner, they were having a conversation. Um, Emily was like asking, you know, you guys really, not asking, but she was saying that, you know, you maybe you guys, Cameron and Claire, maybe you guys need to do a different approach, you know, ex discussing what you guys need. And all of a sudden, Cameron says in front of everybody, Claire, at the count of three, I want you to tell me what you want. You're either gonna divorce, or you're gonna stay with me and you're gonna try. Cameron, you go out of your way to freaking embarrass and humiliate Claire and I'm over it and I'm not here for it. And Claire said divorce and I couldn't have been happier. The angels rejoiced and I wanted to turn my television off after that, honestly. I was very happy, but I, I also know that I'm gonna keep seeing you in every episode until freaking decision day. Emily freaking becomes upset because Brennan, he's being asked directly about how he feels about the future of him and her, okay? Um, Claire was the one that asked that question. Yeah, I think we're just taking it day by day, honestly. After he says we're taking it day by day. I go to the bathroom. I will walk with you. Nope, you don't have to do that. Claire got up to go with her and was like, excuse me, like excusing herself from the table. And Cameron is like, Claire, where are you going? I'm going to the bathroom. Cameron, can you please, can y'all, are all of y'all empty headed? Why do you think, if, if Emily literally just left the table upset and now Claire's getting up, y'all really don't have no brains. Obviously, Claire was going to go comfort Emily. Is that okay with you? And you're at the table mocking Claire. So Claire meets up with her and she's like, what's up? She gives her a hug. She's like, what's going on? And Emily is explaining that Brendan is being distant. He's not saying what he, you know, he's not saying anything. Everybody else is sharing their feelings or whatever. And he's standing over there like a mother freaking bump on the log with nothing to freaking say. Claire tells her straight up, if you know he's not here for you, you need to leave. Emily says, oh, but I like him. Like him for what? He has no redeeming qualities at all. Why do you like him for? She's like, Emily is like, I wish I didn't have feelings for him, but I do. But I do. Emily, you're not empty headed. You're a very intelligent woman. A lot of folks will say, Emily, why don't you just blow the hell up on him? Why don't you just curse his ass out? Emily has self freaking control. Do you guys know how difficult it is to have self-control when someone's pissing you the hell off? I know y'all know how hard it is, but I'm going to tell you something. If you don't express your feelings, it gets like a pressure cooker. And this is exactly what happened at the table with Emily. It got to the point where she couldn't freaking take it anymore. Brennan and Cameron is like, where are all these ladies? They over there talking. They're not allowed to have a private moment. We're controlling this. Get our asses over there and find out what the hell they're doing. So explain to me why Brennan gets up to go over to Emily while she's talking to Claire. Like he, you can notice him. He keeps constantly looking over there to see what, what they're doing. So Brennan walks up to them. Emily has gone outside of the restaurant at this point. She's outside and now Brennan's talking to Claire and he's like, what's wrong? And Claire is like, she's very upset. Like, I mean, I'm saying to myself, how did you not notice that, Brennan? Emily takes off, 
Okay, she literally takes off. When I say takes off, she left the dinner. She didn't say bye to nobody, but child, sometimes you ain't got time to say goodbye. So Brennan is over here like Emily acts like everything is okay, but she never says anything is wrong. So he is in the dark and he has no idea. You have no idea how to read body language or clues or even her facial expressions, Brennan. Then Brennan has the audacity to say this. But I won't let her walk away from me like that. Brennan, you are an abusive, controlling piece of turd. That's what you are. You are weird. You're weird. And I don't know if this is how your dad is with your mom, but you have noticed and seen this behavior somewhere and it's something that you're mimicking. Brennan, after he says, I'm not going to let her walk away from me. Who do you think you are? David Ruffin? And he was no good either. Don't get, don't make me get started. I'm not saying he was all bad, but he was a little bad. He goes out there to get Emily. And now Emily and him is in the car and she's like, letting him know, did you not see that I was upset in there? And he's like, huh, I saw you making faces. I'm sorry. And she's like, look, I don't need your mother freaking apologies. I need you to open your mother freaking mouth. Everybody else is sharing and you're sitting over there with nothing to say. Okay, you're not talking about progress, you're not talking about nothing. You know, Brendan is just, he's just as, he's just as empty headed as I've ever seen. Emily says, all this happened tonight, this is confessional, all this happened tonight and nothing has changed. Emily, do you know why nothing has changed? Because you need to take action, that's why. Had you said to Brennan tonight, I want a divorce. I can promise you this would have been a different recap. This would have been a different episode. After Emily says, you know, nothing has changed in this situation in confessional, she turns off and she's freaking crying. I, I hate seeing people cry. It pisses me off, especially good people. And I can tell you right now, Emily is a freaking good person. She's a good woman. She's a good woman. All right. Expert, you did her dirty when you gave her Brennan. I would never let y'all match me. I, never. I would not let you match up Margo with another cat let alone y'all over here purposely mismatching this year. You're purposely mismatching couples. And I understand y'all want drama. You want drama? Then get real couples, okay? And then on the last couple, why don't you get some actors that we've never met before? Emily says she's extremely frustrated with tears in her eyes and I'm sick of it. And all Brennan has to say is that he really doesn't have any answers. You have nothing because your head is empty. That's why you have nothing. So Emily says, you know, tonight was really bad. Brennan claims that he's trying and, oh, it, I know it's not good enough. Well, if you know it's not good enough, then do better. What the hell? She's sobbing in the car. I don't know whose car this is, but anyway, um, she's over it. She's tired. She's letting him know straight up. If you do not change, I'm going to start to resent you. Girl, somebody who doesn't like you does not care if you resent them. All right. Brennan and Emily, needless to say, didn't get back on the bus to go home. Claire is saying she doesn't know what happened, but she hopes everything goes well. Although they've decided to divorce, they're sitting here reminiscing and they're having mixed emotions as before. But I guess they still know that that was the right decision for them to make. Cameron decides to move out completely. And the marriage is over and I am done with this review. I do have your real world Portland episode number one. Yeah, those videos are coming. So if you want to know what the hell happened on the real world Portland, it was dramatic. Before it gets super, super dramatic, I suggest you freaking tune in to my channel where I will be doing the retro recap. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.